In today's video, we're going to be covering the Shapiro Wilk test for normality in Python. I'm going to go over a little bit of the background behind the test as well as like the null and alternative hypothesis. And then we're going to jump into some Python code through two different examples, a uniform distribution, and then also taking a look at a paired t-test. All right, let's start learning. All right, so let's take a look at the Shapiro Wilk test for normality. Now, what this is, is it's a test designed to assess whether a sample comes from a normally distributed population. And why this is important is many statistical tests assume that the data is normally distributed, right? Um, I'm, I'm not sure if this video is going to be after this in the series, but for example, the paired T test, you want to look at the results um, between before and after and see if that's normally distributed. And this is where you'd use like a Shapiro will test for that, right? Now this is best used for small sample sizes. You can technically use it for larger sample sizes, but you're not going to get as accurate results. So this is really great for t tests, uh, but we would want to use a different approach when looking at larger samples, right? And also normally in these statistics videos, I show you how we can calculate this by hand and then also kind of a long way in Python. But because this test is quite complicated, uh, we're just going to be using SciPy for our values. Now, I also wanted to go over really quick, just a recap of what normally distributed is. And I have this over here to the right. I feel like we throw out normally distributed all the time, but it's not always understood what it is. So, right, it's gonna be symmetrical. You can take a look at this graph over here. We can cut it in half right at zero and it's gonna be the same side to side. It's a bell-shaped curve. There's only one peak associated with it. And in the multimodal video, which again, I don't know if it's gonna be before or after this in the series, we have multiple peaks, right? Normally distributed only has one specific peak. It follows the empirical rule, which is 68, 99, 95. It follows the empirical rule, which is 68, 95, and 99.7. So you can see the z-scores here at the bottom, negative one to one, 68% of the values, negative two to two, 95% of the values, negative three to three, 99.7% of the values. And then it's considered mesocritic, which it means there's no skewness involved with it, right? And, uh, Talked about skewness in another video. Highly recommend you guys check that out if you are new to skewness. So I think it's pretty good to have. So uh, that's kind of what normally distributed is. And if you get asked that on an interview question, you throw all that out, the interviewer uh, will be impressed. Okay, let's talk about the null versus alternative hypothesis. So on this side of things, right, the null hypothesis states that the data is normally distributed. And the alternative hypothesis says the data is not normally distributed. So we reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is going to be less than alpha. And typically, we want to set the alpha in this case to 0 0.05. So if we get a p-value of, let's say, 0 0.7, right, we're going to stay with the null hypothesis. We're going to assume that this sample is from a normally distributed population. But if we get a value of 0 0.00001, right, uh, the data is not going to be normally distributed, and we're going to go with that alternative hypothesis. Again, something that you can bring up in an interview when talking about normal distributions and population samples. I think it's pretty helpful. But uh, regardless, I think we are ready to code now. The code is going to be actually quite simple in this video. So uh, nothing really too complex for you guys. And yeah, let's jump into it. All right. So let's start bringing in our dependencies and import in two things. So imports numpy as np from scipy.stats import in our Shapiro. And then import Seaborn as SNS. We're gonna only build out one graph in this video. Uh, it'll be literally a line of code. All right, so now what we wanna do is set our alpha value. I'm gonna set this consistent. So we're gonna say this is gonna be 0 0.05. And then also let's set a random seed. So np.random.seed. That way you guys can replicate the results. I'll put an 11, right? Okay, awesome. And now what we wanna do is we're gonna start off with example one. So we'll say example one over here, example one. And we're going to look at a uniform distribution. So uniform distribution. Awesome. And let's generate that. Uh, the example we're going to be using in this video is rolling a dice. Probably the simplest uniform distribution. Six sides of the die, right? You have a one in six probability of hitting any side. Unless it's loaded, but we're going to assume that it's a fair die. And easy, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say rolls equals np.random.randint, right? And then you're going to start off with one, you're going to end off with seven. Uh, in Python, why it goes to seven, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, then you stop at seven, so you don't include seven. 
okay? And then you're gonna say size equals, and let's say we're gonna run 30 samples on this side of things, right? Okay, great. And, uh, and then let's say we have 30 rolls of the die, and okay, great. So now what we're gonna do is just do a hist plot. So sns.histplot, and then we're gonna pass in our rolls. So we should have 30 results here, and you can see we have this. Now, the low large numbers will say over time, uh, this will be equal out. And I have a full video on that if you wanna watch it. Um, but because we only did 30, this is why it's off. Right now, it looks like a multimodal uh, response because you can see that we have more over here and also right over here, which is kind of funny because I literally just recorded the multimodal video. Uh, but I can promise you that this is a uniform distribution in the long run, law of large numbers. Also, uh, great to pick up these terms if you're gonna talk about stats in an interview, um, watch some of those videos. But regardless, we have this over here and what we're gonna do is take a look at the Shapiro test and essentially look at the null hypothesis, which says this is uh, a normal distribution. And we wanna reject that and show that this is not a normal distribution. We're gonna go to the alternative hypothesis, right? So we're gonna get our p-value from there. So what you're gonna do is say stat, and then I'm gonna use Shapiro p-value. Now you can just say p-value, I like using Shapiro p-value because we're gonna be using this in other uh, other hypothesis tests and I wanna uh, label specifically the p-value I'm using at a certain time. So that's why I use Shapiro p-value. And we're just gonna say this is equal to Shapiro and then just pass in our roles. So pass in roles like that, right? And uh, now what we wanna do, just print out this p-value, right? So Shapiro p-value. And ideally we wanna have a number under 0 0.05 because then we can reject our null hypothesis. And you can see over here, our value is gonna be 0 0.0008, right? Much smaller than 0 0.05. So great, we can reject it. Uh, one piece of code that I like using is just a quick if else statement. And all I do is say, if Shapiro p-value is less than alpha, the data is likely normally distributed, fail to reject HO else the data is not normally distributed, reject HO, right? And you can see the data is not normally distributed, reject HO. So all I did in this example, create a uniform distribution, right? And then uh, all the all those looks like multimodal. And then uh, we have our Shapiro p-value, which we just get from Shapiro passing in the data over here, and then we print it out p-value. So that's the uniform example. Now I wanted to show you an example uh, within another hypothesis test. So shortly before recording this video, I did a video with a paired t-test. So we're gonna do an example like that. So we're gonna say example with a paired t-test. Now you don't need to necessarily know how a paired t-test works in this instance, but I'll, I'll go over a little bit of background. So one of the steps in a paired t-test is to subtract the, the after from before. So you can think of something like exercise um, let's say someone, or let's say a group of people exercise for 12 weeks. Maybe want to take a look at the weight loss difference or how much more can they bench in weight, right? Different things like that. Okay. So, uh, one of the things that the pair T test looks at is if the difference between each of those results is going to be a normal distribution. So this is where a Shapiro Wilk test would be really awesome to use. So. I'm gonna go over the example that I did in the paired t-test video, and we're gonna take a look at revenue of ticket sales for Metallica. And on this one, we're gonna make the assumption that we're taking a look at the same exact city, and we're gonna look at total sales before and after the Black Album release. Now, not my favorite album, but that really got Metallica popular. So what we're gonna have is ticket sales before, and this is just revenue for these cities, right? And then we're gonna have ticket sales after, Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract these. So what we're gonna say is ticket sales diff equals, and we're just gonna subtract after and before. So after minus before, oops, I accidentally did another line, but there we go. And then what we wanna do is run our Shapiro test again. So all we wanna do is grab this, and we'll just grab ticket sales diff, right? And if I print out that p-value, so let's print this out. I wanna have over 0 0.05, otherwise I can't use the paired t-test. 
and I'm in luck, 0 0.89, which is awesome because that means I can continue with that paired test. Now, I'm not going to cover the full paired test in this video. If you want to watch the paired t-test, watch that video. But uh, you can see where the Shapiro p-value was used in this instance. And just like before, let's have our if-else statement over here. If Shapiro p-value is greater than alpha, the data is likely normally distributed and we fail to reject HO. And that's what we should be getting. And take a look. The data is likely normally distributed, fail to reject HO. So really, all you need is this one line and it solves a very complex calculation and it also helps you show that the data is going to be normally distributed and this is only one tool in your arsenal there's other ways to determine if something is normally distributed or not and maybe i'll make videos on those in the future but i think this is a great way to start hey hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did make sure to subscribe to the channel we're uploading three to four data science videos every single week with the goal of reaching 100,000 subscribers in 2025 now if you want to learn even more about statistics i have a full playlist that i've created uh, multiple videos are going to be down below in the description, or you can click onto the playlist right over here.